Welcome to our channel, Daughters of Sheba Foundation for Everything Woman. This is where we empower you to live your best life. And this is our Mind and Maturity program, Mind Wellness for Women 40 Plus. Hey there. Ever felt drained after hanging out with a certain friend? Or maybe you've noticed that certain friendships leave you feeling worse about yourself. Today, we're diving into a topic that might hit close to home for many of us. Toxic friendships. And here's the kicker. We're going to explore why these relationships, friendships, the toxic friendships, can be even more harmful than romantic betrayals. Uh-huh. Stick around because this could change the way you view your, so your social circle. Let's start by defining what we mean by toxic friendships. These are relationships that consistently bring more negativity than positivity into your life. We asked our friend and therapist, Naomi Yano, a registered psychotherapist in Toronto, Canada, to help us with this topic. Here is how she started us off. Let's talk about toxic friendships and manipulation. One way to start to think about this is to identify toxic behaviors, how they affect us, and what to do about it. As we do this, I want to be very careful though to not start to identify the other person as simply evil and us as good. That mentality might be more unhelpful than we think. So let's be cautious about that as we talk about this. Some common signs of a toxic friendship include Manipulation, as Naomi mentioned, this is where your friend uses guilt or pressure to control your actions. For example, they might say something like, if you were really my friend, you'd do this for me. Constant criticism, where nothing you do seems good enough for them. They might always find fault with your appearance, choices, or achievements. Lack of support, when your friend is mysteriously absent during your tough times but they're quick to show up when things are going well or when they need something from you. Jealousy and competitiveness when your success makes them visibly upset or resentful. Gossip and betrayal if your friend regularly talks behind your back or shares your secrets. Naomi again gives us solid advice to be cautious, however, that we don't assume we're being manipulated. She also shared what are some toxic traits we should look out for. Listen. Feeling manipulated is one thing, and it's absolutely valid and something we have to honor. But actually being manipulated can sometimes be different because sometimes even though we feel manipulated, the other person may not actually be intending to manipulate us. It is sometimes, not always, our perception that we are being manipulated. So it's important to make that distinction. Now, let's talk about why these toxic friendships can be worse than romantic betrayals. Firstly, friendships often last longer than romantic relationships. We might date someone for a few months or years, but friendships can span decades. This means the negative impact of a toxic friend can accumulate over a much longer period. Secondly, we often let our guard down more with friends than with romantic partners. We might be more vigilant about red flags in dating, but we tend to excuse bad behavior from friends. This can allow toxic patterns to develop and persist unchecked. Thirdly, society gives us more support and understanding when ending a romantic relationship. This societal pressure can keep us in toxic friendships longer than we should be. Now, let's delve into the psychological effects these toxic friendships can have. Let's hear what Naomi has to say on this. We will look at how we are impacted, the feelings of being manipulated, but we're going to start first by looking at the behaviors that, whether they are correctly perceived or not, can feel manipulative. So in other words, when we feel manipulated, what are the actual behaviors, or maybe we might call them toxic traits that the other person is doing that is leaving feeling us not good? So. Some examples might be, and this list is not exhaustive, uh, things like gaslighting, which is where our experience is being denied. You know, that thing that didn't actually happen. What are you talking about? 
uh, our feelings might be invalidated. You don't actually feel that way or you shouldn't be upset. It can be dismissing or minimizing. For example, it's not that big a deal. You're overreacting. It can be overt criticism. That's stupid. You're dumb. It can be a hostility or contempt, that sense of you're so you're you're so silly, that's you're less than me. It can be stonewalling or just outright not responding to it. Lowered self-esteem, constant criticism, and lack of support can make you doubt your worth. You might start to believe the negative things your toxic friend says about you. This can lead to a distorted self-image and a lack of confidence in your abilities. So those are some of the behaviors we might notice. And what are the feelings you have when somebody does this to you? That sense of toxic or poisonous is a feeling of this isn't healthy, something's not right. And perhaps you're no longer really connected to who you are or what feels good to you. And so what can happen is we can start to feel confused or like we can't trust ourselves or our own feelings. We might feel anxious or have doubt. We might not feel safe or feel hurt or even really begin to emotionally suffer. Increased anxiety, you might feel on edge around this friend, always worrying about their reaction. You might start to feel anxious in other social situations, fearing similar treatment. Emotional exhaustion, dealing with a toxic friend can drain your energy. You might feel tired after spending time with them, even if you haven't done much. Depression, prolonged exposure to negativity, can lead to feelings of hopelessness. The constant stress of the toxic friendship can contribute to depressive symptoms. Trust issues, if a close friend betrays or manipulates you, it can be hard to trust others. This can impact your ability to form new, healthy relationships in the future. Physical health problems, chronic stress from toxic relationships, can manifest physically. You might experience headaches, digestive issues, or a weakened immune system. Decreased productivity, the mental energy spent on a toxic friendship can affect your work or studies. You might find it hard to concentrate or lack motivation due to the emotional toll. Social isolation, a toxic friend might try to isolate you from other relationships. Or, you might withdraw from social situations to avoid dealing with the toxic friend. This can lead to a shrinking support network, making you more vulnerable. Recognizing these effects is the first step towards addressing toxic friendships in your life. Remember, it's okay to prioritize your well-being and set boundaries. Sometimes, that might mean ending the friendship altogether. This is something that Naomi also spoke about. Let's listen. And it's very common. I think most of us do feel this way when someone behaves this way towards us. But I also want you to notice, when are you or others resilient to toxic behaviors? What's the difference? Why is it that we might feel uh, more stuck in this pattern at certain times or not? So why do you start to feel anxious or confused or doubting yourself when someone behaves this way towards you? I want you to notice your own self-talk. When someone starts to say, that really wasn't a big deal, do you start to buy into it? Do you also say to yourself the same thing? Oh, wait, maybe I shouldn't feel that way. Maybe they're right. Maybe that didn't really happen. Maybe I am overreacting. Maybe this isn't such a big deal. Maybe my feelings aren't actually real and this doesn't matter. Now notice as soon as you start to say that to yourself, who now has the toxic traits? Who now is behaving in a toxic manner? It might now be you. And that's very important to notice because once we start to buy into that, we are now a part of that dynamic. So one of the first things to do might be to first notice when you start to behave in a toxic way towards yourself. Don't gaslight yourself. Don't dismiss yourself. Don't ignore how you feel. Notice that you can control how you respond to yourself, even if the other person may never change. Start by validating what you feel and honoring that your experience is real. And from there, at least you can trust yourself. 
and honor that your experience matters. You can then explore if that friendship is worth salvaging or not. You might want to weigh then the risks and benefits of trying to assert yourself in a healthy manner or maybe just walking away. Every relationship includes two people who impact each other and sometimes it's worth trying to change the dynamic to be healthier. If the other person is also equally willing to take responsibility for what they bring and how they affect you. But if they're not, sometimes it's not worth it to try and stay in that connection. So there you have it. The harsh reality of toxic friendships and why they can be so damaging. Please take a moment to reflect on your friendships. Do any of them show signs of toxicity? Remember, True friends are supposed to uplift you, support you, and contribute and contribute positively to your life. If you are dealing with a toxic friend, know that it's okay to seek help or to make changes. Your mental health and well-being are worth it. If you'd like to learn more about recognizing and handling yourself in such toxic friendships, do check out Naomi's Instagram profile at Instagram slash emotional I see you. If this video resonated with you, please give it a thumbs up and share with someone who might need to hear this. And don't forget to subscribe for more content on relationships and mental health for women over 40. Thanks for watching and take care of yourself. Mm -hmm.